Welcome everyone to the third and uh, final midweek Advent service. We continue with our services based on characters from favorite Christmas TV cartoons. And today we're going to talk about this little fellow for a while, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Actually, we might need Rudolph tonight to guide us around because uh, as we're taping this, um, we're waiting in Nova Scotia for our first big snowstorm. Uh, I don't think we're going to get it as bad as they're calling for because uh, here in uh, Pictou County, we're sort of like the Shangri-La of Nova Scotia. So, uh, <laughs> don't quote me if we end up with a big storm overnight. Let us prepare to worship God. In Bethlehem will be born a Savior. The God of hosts will live among us. Love and laughter will leap within us, jump and dance with joy. In towns and villages, in tower blocks and terraces, Christ is waiting to be born. In palaces and shanty towns, in high streets and back streets, in the vastness of the universe, in the intimacy of our hearts, Christ is waiting to be born. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our homes, come into our lives, come and stay. Let us worship God, let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we come to you in these days of waiting and yearning and watching. We pray that you would continue to surround us with your presence and your peace that passes all understanding. Bless our worship and continue to use us as instruments of your hope, peace, love, and joy. In Jesus' name, Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke in the second chapter, beginning to read at the eighth verse. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Be to God. I'd like to talk a little about misfits. Well, I guess this series in many ways has been based on misfits. When you think of Charlie Brown, when you think of the Grinch, and then our friend Rudolph uh, in the 1964 TV show uh, he sang along <laughs> with uh, Hermie, the toy maker elf, a song about misfits. In our scripture reading, the shepherds were probably 
the biggest misfits of the Christmas story. And they live out in the fields. They're suffering all kinds of deprivations and dangers in order to protect the flock. Their ways would not be gentle. And they, for all their dedication and willingness to lay down their lives, would still be regarded as disaffected misfits. Professor William Barclay has commented that the shepherds were despised by the orthodox good people of the day, mainly because they were unable to keep the details of the ceremonial law, which included all the meticulous hand washings among countless rules and regulations. And yet, as Barclay points out, it was to simple men of the fields that God's message of a Savior first came. Part of my devotions this morning included the reading of the first 11 verses of Matthew's Gospel. And that is the long list of the genealogy of Jesus. All of those names that, well, nobody wants to read in church. It begins by recalling the over 40 generations of Jesus' family tree. And let's face it, some of the branches of that tree were not too great. When you think of it, many of them were quite undesirable. Murderers, thieves, adulterers, all sorts all sorts of misfits. But God redeemed a line of misfits and miscreants with his power, and he used several biblical figures as an important part of his plan. He's ready to do the same for us. We are more than able to bring Christ into the world, just as David and Solomon and Moses and all the others did. Now to our little friend Rudolph. The 1964 TV adaptation of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a tale of misfits. There's Rudolph, born with a nose that glows in the dark. Hermie, the toy maker elf who really wants to be a dentist. Yukon Cornelius, the dog sled driver who usually ends up pulling the sled while his huskies sit on it. And, of course, the Bumble, the abominable snow monster. Tired of being teased, Rudolph runs away, and the Bumble decides to have him for lunch. If it can't have him, it'll have his family. So Rudolph defends his family with his new antlers. Yukon Cornelius drops an avalanche on the Bumble, and Hermie removes all its scary teeth. Now back at Christmas Town, Santa comes to the conclusion that even misfits have a place. Yukon Cornelius brings a tame bumble into town, and they discover that it's tall enough to put a star on the Christmas tree. Hermie, the elf, begins looking after everyone's teeth. And Rudolph? Well, a snowstorm surrounds the town, and a despairing Santa concludes that he can't fly his sleigh if he can't see where he's going. And then Rudolph's nose starts to glow, and because of his guiding light, the children of the world get their Christmas gifts. Santa isn't the only one with a soft spot for misfits. Our Lord Jesus seemed to spend most of his time with them. But then he knew a secret. Just as all the odd characters in the Christmas special had a vital role to play in the story, so do those of us who might think ourselves odd in real life. The point is, God doesn't make misfits. We all have an important role to play 
and we all fit in somewhere in God's plan. We may have to navigate the snowstorm of life for a little while, but with God as our guiding light instead of Rudolph, we'll get there and find the place, the profession, or the person he made us for. Thanks be to God. Amen. In our prayer of intercession, each petition will end with the words, Hear us, O God, and the response will be, Your mercy is great. Let us pray. Stir up in our hearts an eagerness for your coming. Grant us patience in our waiting. And while we wait, Strengthen us to persevere in ways of justice and righteousness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In this season, nurture dry and dormant land so that they will blossom in the coming months. Spread your abundance through all lands, that every living thing may be filled. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us who are oppressed or neglected. Lift up all who are cast down. Deliver those in the captivity of loneliness and poverty into your freedom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Strengthen those who are made weak by the heavy burdens that they carry. Surround them with messengers who announce your presence with them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Raise the expectations of all who seek in this season. Turn us from material things and open us to a life full of healing and renewal where all people receive good news. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Remembering the saints who have entered into your eternal reign, sustain us through their witness to your everlasting faithfulness until we are united in the fullness of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, we entrust to you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promise through Christ our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Our closing prayers. Lord, now let thy servants depart in peace according to thy word for our eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the race of all, the face of all people lighten our darkness we beseech thee o lord and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thine own son our savior jesus christ the almighty lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect rest we will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is Thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.